Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, today is the day that you have long been waited for because you watched... I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding, even in the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, of right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child, this blank, pale, emotionless face, and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I met eight years... <clears throat> I spent eight years trying to reach him. Then another seven trying to keep him locked up. Because I realized that's what was living behind that boy's lies. Purely and simply, evil. <laughs> um, so what, we're doing quotes now? I don't know, I thought that was cool, man. It wasn't good. At halfway through, I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> uh, you were so loud. You're like the loudest. Black eyes, <laughs> like a doll's eyes. <laughs> See it anyway. That's what I thought it was true. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Third time's a charm. Speaking of three things. Today is the day we are having a menage a trois. Trois, trois, trois. It's spelled Troy. Just keep talking. Uh, uh, three of the most fabulous uh, slasher films of all time. The films that actually, I think, started the slasher craze, I would say. With one exception, which we will get to. Oh, Alan. Alan with his exceptions. Uh, because you watched Happy Halloween! Star Crash. This is the Gory Hole Special. Oh, the, the first annual uh, Gory Hole Special where we will be reviewing uh, Halloween-y, slasher-y, whatever horror Hall films. Halloween-y. Halloween -er films. <laughs> when I was typing this up uh, yesterday, it was always Halloween. I don't know <laughs> exactly if that was a premonition. That's telling. Yes. It's very telling. Uh, and today what is call the... a tell in book <laughs> business. <laughs> Today is the day where myself, Michael Vanderpool, Dr. Alan Barris, and Michael the Adjunct Clink, the uh, artist with the- That's the smartest. That's the smartest. Um, <laughs> artist, that's the fartist? Aww. Today we will be talking about three slasher films, kind of the holy holy trinity, can we call them that? The yes, holy trinity yes. of slasher films. Uh, uh, Friday the 13th, the original, which yep. was 1970... Oh, it's 1980. That's 19... 80. Oh, 1980. Uh, yeah, it is Halloween yeah. that is first, of course. Halloween was uh, 1978, and then uh, Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy Krueger at 1984. Yes. So, there's a lot to talk about today. Um, a lot of way directions we could go. I don't know how to do this, other than maybe starting with Halloween, because that's what yes. started all of this, and then we'll just see the chips fall where they may. So... Did Halloween start this, or did Psycho start this? Psycho started. Okay. And so, Psycho's all over this. Yes. So Psycho is like the incredibly wealthy and attractive older sister to all these males. <laughs> because Psycho, while it was done for really cheaply, and Hitchcock wanted it to look kind of cheap, it's really classy in comparison. It's still a psychological thriller, ultimately. And, uh, I mean, you can go back and forth about whether Hitchcock's really highbrow filmmaking or not, but uh, Halloween is what happens when John Carpenter gets his sweaty mitts on Psycho, which, again, has its charms as well. And much like Psycho, uh, Halloween has great soundtrack, too. It's one of the, it's one of the uh, key draws to the movie. I, I would argue it's its only redeeming quality. Uh, I see, no, I will disagree because I love Donald Pleasance. Okay. Well, I thought this was Lewis shot better. Is great. Halloween was shot beautifully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks good. Like, oh, oh. there's a long take. Uh, there's a lot of long takes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't even notice. And it takes its them. time. Yeah. It takes its time. And all three of these, I will argue, are very wonderfully shot films. They all look very good. Halloween looks a little, not Halloween, uh, Friday the 13th looks a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. But the effects are, of course, done by Tom Savini, who goes on to be one of the best uh, effects guys in the business, one of the best makeup effects guys. Mm -hmm. um, so its uh, its uh, wounds actually look pretty good. I mean, for the most part. I mean, they got better later, obviously. Yeah. But the, the color mm -hmm. in Friday the 13th is really, really good. Their, their use of color, and I don't know if it's the Kodachrome look, whatever they had, but it, it looked really good, I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, so before we get too deep into into the morass of what these three films are, that was a big word. Hey. Make somebody else look some shit up. So I don't um, know. I, I, I was I know, tell them what this is about. But I know what morass means, but can you explain, Doctor? Can you explain what morass means to those who don't know? It means because I know a sticky thing that we get <laughs> caught in. Hey. Hey, nice. So speaking of sticky things we get caught in, Star Crash is the movie that I watched. 
Uh, it is a phenomenal uh, sci-fi classic roped in Michael Klink, uh, roped in Dr. Alan Barris. We started doing this podcast and we talk about a few things, WTF moments, quotes, and if these films were successful in what they were actually trying to accomplish. And I will argue that um, two of these three films are ass, complete and utter worthless ass with no redeeming qualities other than they spawned multi-million dollar franchises. And one is a very, very, very good movie that launched the career of one very, very, very sexy pirate. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about what's the dude that played Freddy? Robert Unglund? Robert Unglund. I thought you were going to talk about him. England. 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 Oh, England. I, I thought I, I was using the Cockney pronunciation. <laughs> what? Uh, his best work, though, I will have to argue, is uh, in Zombie Strippers. I never saw it. It's in Zombie Strippers. Yes. Anyway, he, uh, he is. I think he is the strip club owner in, in Zombie Strippers. But he also plays Jan Harold Brunvand, uh, probably the best known folklorist, although they give him a fake name, uh, in Urban Legend. Nice. Yeah, it sucked. But, but uh, he was. <laughs> Was the rest he, of the movie was terrible. Was he the roommate of uh, Mark Hamill? Because I heard a story that Mark Hamill was going to uh, not go in, or he didn't know anything about uh, Star Wars, the original Star Wars. Mark he, Hamill? Mark Hamill didn't know anything about it. I want to say Robert England was the guy that told him, hey, you should uh, uh, go for this. This is a, a, a thing that you, you would probably like. And then that's why he went and did it. Really? The audition. I don't know if it was him, though. If it was, uh, it would make a lot of sense. Robert England could have been cast in that role as a young man. Uh, he also has that goofy kind of like weird innocence about him, although he's not as good looking as Hamill. Yes. That's true. Hamill was very good looking. And now he's older. Well, yeah. But awesome Joker. Were we yes. all were we all good looking? I still am, sir. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking. Some of us had to grow into our looks and then immediately grew out of that. <laughs> so. There was one day in nineteen ninety six. <laughs> I was that, amazing. That hair parted just right and the ladies <laughs> couldn't resist. Speaking of ladies that can't resist, uh these are all mor- morality plays who punish women for um sexuality. Yeah. Sexuality. Definitely. Well, is, 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 I know Friday the 13th, 100%, mm-hmm. Halloween 100% is Nightmare? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, you're right. Because, yeah, because the, the, the good girl who uh, does not have uh, sex with the uh, the monster who is introduced in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Johnny Depp, uh, <laughs> she ends up uh, uh, sexy uh, pirate. surviving. What? So morality plays are there to... Scare you? Tell a story? Good. Like, say, hey, don't do the X because then you'll get killed or do something bad will happen? Yes, that is pretty much how they work. Do these work? Uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, to understand that, we have to go back to the original, well, one of the original morality plays that uh, was created for popular culture, and that is Daniel Defoe's Mal Flanders which was created, I believe, I don't remember if it was before or after Robinson Crusoe or not, but Moll Flanders was about a woman who was a streetwalker and a criminal and a wide variety of other things you weren't supposed to be in the 18th century. And uh, it's about her sex sex sexcapades. And uh, in the last 20 pages of the book, she becomes a Christian. She ends up uh, immigrating to Virginia, if I remember right, and she ends up living with one of her cast-off children who she reconciles with, and she is saved. Hey! That's so, nice. And the entire book is, of course, about about whoring and stealing and lying, and yet the end is supposed to, in, is supposed to put a moral tale to all of this. So these movies are supposed to be about Yes, there is a morality being transmitted, but how much are we really supposed to believe it? And how much of that is just a thin window dressing so we can see some boobs? <laughs> well, and, and okay, so we got there sooner than I had hoped. But, um, but the boobs weren't as, um, there weren't as much of it as I remembered. Not as nearly as much of PJ Souls as I wanted to see, but anyway. Which one was that? Was that? Uh, she is the second gal who uh, reveals boobs in uh, Halloween. Oh, she's in uh, she is in rock and roll high school, which is why I have a crush on her. You'll uh, we'll we'll talk about rock and roll high school later. Uh, add it to the add it to the it will be added to the, the wheel of wheel of death. She's great. 
She does very little here. Well, okay. <laughs> so, she's great. These morality plays or morality ta- tales, classically... I go back to the Bible. Well, no, I'm and saying, beyond. I'm saying now, classically, horror movies are where you took a date. Mm-hmm. Because then they would get scared. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you would they would cling on to you or something, right? Is that a like thing? Michael Jackson thriller video. Yes. Yes, for people out there who probably don't know what that is. Well, no, because our audience is pretty old and white. So, yes, they would know what that is. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Go ask your students tomorrow. No, I'm not going to. They, Go ahead of them. they don't know. You see Michael Jackson thriller. They might. I mean, it's classic. But so I guess, you know, this idea of the morality play and we can we can definitely track these things back to these films uh, back to some uh, inspiration from Psycho. But Alan, I'm going to ask you, folklorist, where does this slasher stuff come from before this? Well, the idea of the human serial killer uh, probably the best known and the, really the creation of the category, although we didn't call it that yet, would be, of course, Jack the Ripper. Um, but uh, but also, we did not have any delusions about Jack the Ripper being supernatural. The idea of a supernatural serial killer as part of one of these movies really shows up with Halloween when it comes right down to it. Uh, the the monster gets created. And even Michael Myers in this case, we don't get the supernatural part of him as much. Uh, he is, he's, uh, it's only with the later films that we get the idea that he is uh, supernaturally tough, that he can come back after being murdered multiple times. Uh, with Friday the 13th, we don't get any supernatural stuff in it at all, other than the fact that Jason's mother is capable of throwing a a dead weight human that she has murdered through a window yeah. with no difficulty. Um, and really, it's Freddy that introduces the uh, supernatural elements to this whole formula, which <laughs> then further infuses the competition later on. And Friday the 13th, uh, the killer, uh, what's her Voorhees? What's Mrs. Voorhees? What's, I, I can't remember what her first name is. Mrs. I think. She, yeah, right? Mrs. She, she Voorhees. Has, she actually has a real name in this. I thought it was, it was it yeah. Mary or something? Um, it was a little, little less, a uh, little bit more flowery than that. But she, um, other than the super strength or, you know, some strength uh, a lot greater than her, her, her size, her stature, I'd argue. Uh, her ability to withstand some pain. Right. Pamela Voorhees. Pamela Voorhees, yes. Um, uh, the only other thing that even hints at anything like something that would be even uh, supernatural would be her using her son, her talking to herself. Maybe she's yeah. possessed. But but that's really just, I mean, and that's a reverse cycle. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, reverse that's reverse reverse cycle. And then the ending, which is, is it a dream? Yeah. Or is it yeah. uh, kind of uh, thing there? That is where the supernatural part might enter in. Yeah, and then like so the the, the survivor of the the last survivor of Friday the 13th, she remembers the boy coming out of the lake. Yep, yep, to it. So then the way that she presented it though was did you find the boy and then they said no, so then that the, it, it, it was pretty saying to us that that actually happened and she's right. remembering it instead of a dream, but there's enough of a plausible deniability. Yeah. To- well, and, and the biggest failing I think that Friday the 13th has is there's no fucking story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was waiting, and then all of a sudden it starts right? happening. Yeah. yeah. It was really weird. Yeah, it, it there is no story. But, so... This is a movie I wanted more exposition. In all yes, these, weirdly movies. enough. Because you, yeah. get, you get these little dumb things that don't feel connected, but... It, mm-hmm. Yeah. But then we're supposed to connect them, and it's... They're not... They're not it's not Tarantino-type editing, it's just crazy all over editing. And then we're supposed to connect it. Because at the towards the end is where Pamela Voorhees tells about her son drowning, and that's why those two people died at the very beginning of the movie. Right. And we're like, okay, do I care now? Like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. That's Friday Thirteenth. You care about no one, right? I want to see the kids smoke weed, have sex, and die. <laughs> yep, <that laughs> not is. necessarily in that. It is pretty much it. <laughs> what? <laughs> but that's so. So uh, Friday the Thirteenth was the first one that I watched. For right. no other reason, that's what I searched for first. So I don't know if that skewed my my perception, whatever. Um, but the that story was not efficient at all. Like the snake bit contributed absolutely nothing yeah. to, to anything. Um, her taking five minutes to 
the pile up stuff in front of the door to barricade the door. And <laughs> <it'll be laughs> <all> the <laughs> like, there's so much. That was awesome because I was waiting for uh, the. So the entire time I'm waiting for actually Jason Voorhees, what we know of him, yeah, yeah. the hockey man yeah. and everything. I was waiting for him to be standing behind, and when she's done turning around and just seeing me, and he's like, "Why did you just do?" You know, I was waiting for like a, a bit or a stick, but it was just, "Why is she doing this?" Right. And then, oh, I can just take this all off and leave. See, ironically, I find uh, Friday the Thirteenth is only like suspenseful for people who come to the franchise much later and haven't heard that Mrs. V is right. actually the villain yeah. and are looking for Jason and Jason never shows up except at the very end and maybe in a dream. It's, so it's, with that though, Jason is a boy when he dies. Yes. Right. But then the, the, the guy we see is this like seven foot, 350 pound dude. It's so 15 years later, puberty man. What? He's dead. <laughs> We don't know what Pierre does to the point. I don't know if there's been a story. Flake, Flake, Flake. evil never dies. <laughs> so that it'd just be a little kid running around. Well, and that's arguably scary. Yes. Mm, nah. You can't see out in this case. Right. It's, it's, it's interesting. Friday the 13th is, I'm going to argue, the worst of them. Um, oh, yeah. The the fakery, trippy, like who who's killing the people? Is a question that they kind of half ask, right? Mm-hmm. And provide just silly there's gimmicks real, around, yeah. To say it might be this person, this person, but we there's really no heavy red herring ing going on here. We're not really getting like a strong. It could be this guy, or it could be this guy. It's everything is just kind of. It like kind of just shows up right before they get killed. Yeah, <laughs> and everybody's got a green jeep. Right. Yeah. Same type. Right. Like it's not like a. It's, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna argue this whole movie is a red herring. But the actress who played Marcy said, "I didn't even really think of this movie as such a as a horror film. To me, it's a small independent film about some very carefree teenagers who are having a rip roaring time at summer camp, where they happen to be <laughs> working as counselors. Then they just happen to get killed, and that's how she kind of played it. The the one that um." Had, had just had sex with uh, Kevin Bacon, and then she went to the, uh, the bathroom, and that's where she died in the bathroom with the axe in her head. Yeah. So she was acting like, hey, it's just a fun ha ha ha, and she kind of did. Which it, like I mean, it was. Yeah. To that. I, uh, I mean, I could see you're playing that. And then <laughs> the beginning girl that we meet, Annie. Yeah, Annie, who she, never even sees the other folks. Right? She's poor, very poor much cute, Annie. You could tell she's very much a theater actress oh yeah yeah because she was very much playing a theater character really it was really funny like wow you can tone it down just a little bit but it's still it was good i liked it It, she was the best part and unfortunately she never got a chance to make anybody else better because you never got her with anybody else it was she shows up into town we get some side story we get we get the uh the guy that gives her a ride uh by lifting her by her buttocks right into the car i'm just like i saw that well that's those are the 80s, folks. That was the yeah. start of the 80s. That explains yeah. it all. Um, uh, the guy that's driving that, and then she runs into uh, the killer, who we only get in POV again. This no. is this is a, the only real similarity, I think, to, to Halloween was the use of POV. Yeah. Um, uh, and then she's dead. And nobody knows. Oh, did you, you're forgetting her encounter with Crazy Ralph. Ralph, yes. Yes, yeah. Which he's, he's another red herring. Going to Camp Blood, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... On has got a death curse. <laughs> on, on. We don't even know that. What does that mean, Ralph? Yeah, death yeah. curse. Yeah. But in <laughs> in that, they were talking about how that place is haunted because two people died, and so it got me thinking. Okay, so is America haunted? Because we've got a lot of murders and deaths and and atrocities. Like, yes, Clank. It turns out America's haunted. That we are the monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not a reality play. This is a social commentary. Yeah. Well, and again, uh, Camp Crystal Lakes in New Jersey, and uh, it is, and the it did get, get shot at some New Jersey locations. One of them being the Moravian Cemetery in Hope, New Jersey. That is shot. I don't remember. I think it's Annie. Gets out of the vehicle at there and is walking. Okay, because I think that's the like the crossroads where she gets dropped off at. 
Well, not a great place to get dropped off, by the way, unless you're looking for the devil. What was the name of the cemetery? That was the Moravian, Moravian Cemetery in Hope, New Jersey. It is real. And I actually thought I wrote something down about that, yeah, yeah. so... I looked it up. Friday the 13th was my third movie that I watched. Mm-hmm. That was the last one. And by last time... I'm done. Yeah. But that last, the last time I got kind of oh. sick of the teenagers having sex. I'm like, mm-hmm. really? Teenagers having sex again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Far too little time. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably a stretch, but more avian would be more birds, and that could be a reference to a Hitchcock film. Hey, boom! I mean, that's a freaking well. I mean, it's a stretch. stretch. Uh, I've stretched pretty far for Back to the Future. So yes. I'll allow it. GMNG to YouTube. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and I, I didn't mean to start us out with Friday the Thirteenth, but that's kind of where it went. Um, I, I, this will be inter inter loping. I want to I want to do a service announcement. So anytime anybody sees a dog, don't just walk up to it and start petting it, especially if it's sitting out alone. When does that happen? That happens at the beginning of Friday the Thirteenth. Annie just goes up to the gas station and there's a random dog sitting there. She kneels down and starts petting it. It has a conversation with it. Yeah. Don't 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 pet train your dog. Don't do anything that you see in these movies. Yes. Yes. No drinking. No Especially not Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, my best line will will come from uh, talking about Johnny Depp in um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, one last thing about Ralph before I forget: the movie starts with a whole bunch of red and greens, which is very Vertigo ish, mm-hmm. and then there are some yellows that are pulled in. Ralph is the only character that has blue. Mm-hmm. His bike is light blue. Wait, Ralph. Ralph. Crazy. The, the cra- crazy Ralph. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a quote from Ralph. Bicycle. Ralph some. Yeah. Yeah. He's the only character I think that ever has anything blue. Yellow uh, is associated with Mrs. Voorhees, specifically that raincoat when she comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the the hero, heroine. Can we say heroine? You yes. can say final girl. The final girl. Uh, she's also Alice. Alice is wearing yellow at times as well, which was an interesting choice. Okay. I think if they had introduced um, Pamela Voorhees sooner, yes, and the stories they just had her working at the camp, maybe yeah. something seething with rage secretly at all the boning going on, <laughs> something. <laughs> well, they, they did a horrible job of establishing even what was really going on at the camp. I get we they okay they, they were, were setting still, it up they were setting it up but yeah. like it just never I don't I don't know it was weird because it was just weird to me. Are those kids getting paid to? Do construction work? Is that what's happening? They're they're the counselors. <laughs> yeah, but they're doing the work to get the camp set up. So oh, it's okay. a low rent operation. Let's just say that. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, let me tell- closed for fifty years. Or yes, yes, thirty years, so, twenty. But uh, let me talk about the greatest injustice of this movie: that we don't get to see Ned die. So Ned is the yeah. annoying kid who is constantly on 11. I yeah. have at one point my note is in all caps and boldface, kill Ned, kill him. Yeah. Now. So yeah. Ned is supposed to be the comic relief. He's yeah. supposed to be the he comic failed. guy. He's and I was super upset with him. Yes. I'm like, no, dude, that's not how you do this. Yeah. He's a poor, he's a poor kid for you. I would have. I mean, I, I wanted him to die, too. And he was a perfect example of white privilege because the cop shows up. Yeah. And if he'd seen that nonsense from anybody else, he'd beaten them, <laughs> beat him to death right off the spot. Uh, uh, Ned is dressed like a uh, ninja. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like full world bondage. Never could have been a little, uh, when was, um, wow, what the fuck, dude? Am I that far gone already? What's that film that that one guy did with Jack Nicholson? The, the Shining. Oh, uh, 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 the Shining? Or the one with the Rapukins? No, The Shining. Because okay. The Shining is the horror film and all the Indian references that are in that. Oh, all right. You know, right. Could have been just, just these, like, oh, what do we do? Let's do something like that. But, um, that could uh, be it. The best, uh, speaking of the cop who comes to the camp, that's where the best that's- comes from. Who, wa- who wants that one? Because it's a good one. Go ahead. It might actually be the tagline for my, for my life. Go ahead. What? Oh, should we send it up first? Yeah. So the, the the police officer rides in on his bike and comes in, and uh, uh, the three camp counselors are there, and uh, they're being fun teenage kids. And the cop says, uh, "What did you just get off a spaceship or something? Columbia Gold, man, grass, hash, the weed, <laughs> the weed." <laughs> With that, I wrote worst cop ever. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> We're like, what was that game? The, honey, the newlyweds, yeah, we a match. So uh, speaking, going back to Ned though. He uh, I mean, attempted murder, so attempted murder. He shot an arrow next to that g- girl when she set oh, yeah, up the, yeah. the uh, she set up a target. He was joking. He was joking. 
And uh, you could say just joking apparently in the 80s and get away with shit like that. Uh, you oh, my now too. You can do it now, too. It's just horrible. Yeah. Yes, Ned's the worst. Yeah. And we don't get to see him die. Yeah. We only, get, to, we only get to see him dead, which is not sad. And I, want I wanted him, him to get an axe in the head. Yeah. Or balls. Perhaps. He was the shaggy kind, and I wanted to have that be cool. And then after two seconds, I'm like, this guy needs to die. No, he's like Matthew Lillard <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> is he the one that walks into the house? Yeah. And then we don't see him. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Okay, cool. But do we really see anybody... Die. Oh yeah, and yeah. enough. We see Kevin Bacon get stabbed in the throat. Oh yeah, yeah okay. You're right. I'm an idiot. From reverse. Yeah. Uh, axe. Yeah, yeah. We uh, see. Yeah, we see. Yeah, yeah. She. But that's the immediate she gets act. We don't see the axe hitting. Oh, that's true. But we that's, see that's where like, the actual act of something. Oh, dying. I see. It is Kevin Bacon. You're right. Yep. And then Annie was the uh, the throat was slit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve. There's yeah. one stabs in the gut, and we didn't see the, the knife going, but we saw his reaction to it. Yeah. Oh, and he then gets the St. Sebastian treatment with the arrows stuck in him as he's hung out yeah. the door. So, is there was there symbolism, or was that just a thing? That it is a little cool. <laughs> um, I do have to just show some love and appreciation for uh, jean shorts <laughs> because God. it's just the jean shorts and the and the neckerchief i mean it's just a look that it, it has to come back outside of just um certain roads and bars in new orleans what <laughs> was that was that the fashion that was when you were little uh i don't i hope not i didn't yeah i, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so yeah my note up her ass into the jeep up by her ass. So there, that's different. <laughs> it's it's different. <laughs> I, I did even write the funny guy needs to die first. I wrote that down. <laughs> and sadly, Pierre denied. So, was, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Speaking of people dying, are there yeah. any black people in these? No. Okay. I, 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 I'm just, no, yeah, I didn't I just, know that. Yeah. Black guy dies first. They that's what introduced it. later on. It's actually progress. <laughs> oh, I see that really sacrifice. <laughs> really sarcastically. Oh, good God. So, before anything happens that the, the main group knows about, they're trying to go to the office. About? I'm sorry, Friday the 13th. Friday, we'll sleep with Friday. Okay. We'll sleep with that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. They're going into, to the office, and they can't get in the office, so they go to break the window. But this is before they even knew any know any like murders are happening or anything. They just want to call somebody. So their first thing is to break a window. Like, what? In a normal situation, you go, oh, it's locked, and you try and get other ways. But you wouldn't break a window. That's... I, if, if it's not life or death, then I don't see why they would do that. It's more direct. I, I guess. I mean, freaking They're action heroes. Kids in their breaking windows stuff. So, <laughs> Friday the 13th, but does it actually happen on Saturday the 14th? Because isn't there a title I, at the beginning I, and then like a day pass? Lost track. Don't think about that. Just play along. I did. That's, I don't know. Yeah, but don't worry. Brain cells firmly turned <laughs> off with this. Uh, thinking about horror films makes them less scary. Yes. So you can't go into a horror film trying to analyze it. And that's where you get people like, why did she run up the stairs? Why did she do that? Why did she put the, all the stuff in the middle yeah. in front of the door? You know, it's just no. We're here yeah. for two things: <laughs> blood and guts. Three. Blood and guts and gore. Boobs. <laughs> This was the 80s. That these movies are made for boobs to be shown at least once. Oh, and let's not forget, we wanted to see Ned die horribly. Yes. No. Denied. I will give all three of these movies, the killers, I will give them all credit. Because they all have a flair for the dramatic. They're really good at that. Like, it's amazing. You know what impresses me the most about them all? Yes. How they can do what they do while suffering from asthma. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Or severe full body burns. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what? Go exactly. Ready. What do you have to give it? So, uh, Steve, when our uh, for Friday the Thirteenth, when our uh, heroine was running out, and then all the dead bodies are around, Steve all of a sudden falls down upside down. He's been dead for a while. Uh -huh. And then uh, Halloween, when Jamie Lee Curtis's character, whatever, she's backing up into the bedroom and she sees her dead uh, one of her dead friends lying on the bed with the gravestone of, of Jason's older sister and then she backs up more and then her other dead friend is there and she backs up more and then all of a sudden randomly there's this door that slides open and 
it's her dead friend's uh, boner guy. I don't know the guy that Wait, dead friend's boner guy. <laughs> Are you talking about the, boner like the, the, uh, the... rush of blood to uh... no the the guy that she did, her friend slept with her lover okay. the boyfriend guy and he's there too. So all they're they're all just there, but they reveal themselves in a very dramatic way, which is crazy. And then obviously Freddy plays with dreams. So that's all dramatic too, because he can do certain things with them. I don't know, it's just it's interesting, and I like their energy. I just don't like the outcome. So that they can put their energy it's to murder art. If they can put their energy to wedding planning, <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> they should be wedding planners. Uh, speaking of wedding planning, <laughs> uh, let me scroll through my notes here. There's got to be something, and there's nothing. <laughs> so. Have you two played hide and seek with children recently? No. My son if played today. Did. I didn't. I think I'd end up on a list. <laughs> okay. Anyways, did you? I have a niece and nephew, so we play hide and seek. Okay. Oh, good, good. I'm uh, still talking about Friday the 13th. Got there's it. There's the part where our hero is trying to uh, hide. So there's like a cabin and there's a little space between a cabin and a wall. So she kind of goes in there. She's like, no, that will work. <laughs> she's very nonchalant about it. Like, I'm kind of scared, but I want to hide. So then she goes into the closet and closes the door and hides there and pulls the do- on the door to make sure it doesn't open. And I'm like, this is not hide and seek. This is you're running from a killer. So you probably should do more than just what you're doing. <laughs> there you go thinking about it again. Right? Yeah. That's my problem. I think Using those brain cells. Yep. I shouldn't do that. When... If you're ever, and this is another proper service announcement, if you're ever chased by a a psycho killer and you knock them down, hit them in the head, stab them in the neck, and they go down, don't think they're done because they're not. My comment on that is very specifically my note to Alice when she succeeds in knocking down Mrs. V is, yeah, Negan that bitch, Alice. (laughs) (laughs) She's got a frying pan. Yeah. She should be seeing at least gray matter by the end of that. That's all. Head wounds are usually more bloody, but they're not as bad usually. I mean, look worse than they are, I should say. So, yeah. And Jamie Lee Curtis's character, after knocking out Michael Myers, just leaves the knife that yeah. she's protecting herself with next to the knock, knocked out killer. And then when she stabs him in the throat with the knitting needles, she leaves him there. Yeah. To go and yeah, it's just. Yeah. Dull, dull, dull thing. Don't think. And why would you leave in a boat if you think your killer, the killer is in? I don't even try to like be where you can see all around you, but she at Friday thirteenth at the end she put went in a boat and kind of just went in the middle of the lake. Well, for the dramatic, <laughs> she becomes the killer at some point. What? Doesn't she? No. I've never seen any of the I other movies. I don't. I, 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 I thought when we big Jason was in the next one. What? I don't remember what happens to her in the next one. It's probably like Alien, where she just was gone. Um, uh, no, she is in the second. Oh, movie, really? I recall. Yeah. Okay. But where else would you go to be safe? I guess. That Not the best? lake. There's sharks out there, man. The sharks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, said the doctor. <laughs> uh, sharks. Uh, oh, because Alice drops the bat, too. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many. They all drop things. the weapon. Yeah, they're like, hey, I, I, I've won... Yeah, but well, it's not sporting unless you <laughs> make it more chance. Killer killer has a chance. Who called the cops at the end of Friday the Thirteenth? Good question. Everybody's oh, dead. Right. Cops show up. They probably found a random body of the road. All the, the bodies were there at the rate that Voorhees was killing. But all the bodies were in the. Oh, I'm positive she murdered Andy. No, where was Andy? Super fun. Andy was in the car in the jeep. You oh, saw his right. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah, we do see for. her there. Everybody's accounted for. Well, everyone we know. That's true. It's kind of like the end of Goonies. Except not <laughs> other know. than the fact that the cops show up. <laughs> <laughs> and then close. Oh, and the danger music in Friday the 13th was very, very much psycho. Like, yeah. very, very much yeah, psycho. yeah, to a certain extent. Uh, when it wasn't the yeah stuff. It was all, yeah. It was it's Kill Mob. Oh, is that what's it was? Kill Mob. Oh. Supposedly, and according yeah, to Wikipedia, yeah, 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 yeah. which I, well, you can say how for English papers so I read. <laughs> Seriously? No, you won't. <laughs> also, speaking of the music, Friday the Thirteenth, I noticed that it's the like the end of a sports movie. Like it felt like very upbeat. 
that the end, the end music for Friday the 13th, it wasn't like uh, sad. It was like, hey, we just won the game. Awesome. And then this freeze frame and then they have the music going. That's what it felt like to me, the music at least. It's crazy. What was it you sent us though? Like uh, uh, And the loser the, gets together with the cheerleader and everything. Exactly. A higher key version of the Halloween. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Major, yeah. major yeah. inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was your version. That was the Halloween thing. thing. Which, so the Halloween music, I got kind of sick of that theme song. Because it plays throughout the whole... Oh, right, yeah. right, right. And I'm like, okay. It's really effective at the beginning. It's yeah. it's still effective when you hear bits of it. It's just you can't do it all the time. It should have been only when... Oh, crap. I'm mixing up. I was going to say Jason. Mike Myers was killing. Then it should have been that. Or something. You know, use sparingly. But man, yeah, it was not good. And they're certainly not killer mommy in that case. Well, it should be. All right, so why is that not doing anything there? Okay, tapping the table obviously makes nice. Cool, cool, cool. Hey! I don't need my headset either. This. I don't know if this will be picked up in the microphone. Yeah. Henry Manfredini. Yeah. But this is the end of a sports movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit more pensive than they were describing, but not by a lot. Yeah, it's it's pretty uplifting, though. It's not. I don't know. It's okay. It's not. It's contemplative. It's, it's not music. Yes. It's not music that everyone is dead to. Yes. Should we expect? Mm -hmm. It's like that movie with the chariots or the song. Then her. Are you referring no. to Chariots of Fun? Yes, from St. By Vangelis, yes. <laughs> who just died. <laughs> oh, look at see timely. Um. Uh, the way it's happening right now. It sounds like that, except if you're at opium. Is this a Gen X thing? I'm not going to get this because I'm not a Gen X. Have you seen Blade Runner? Yes. All right. Punch yourself because the soundtrack <laughs> to Blade Runner is Vangelis. Oh, okay. Well. And Vangelis scored like a whole bunch of other like early 80s stuff. Speaking of the best of these films. Take your time. Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> the good one. Um, Halloween. Nightmare on Elm Street. Wait, what? Nightmare on Elm Street. How is it the good one? The music. It is definitely the good one. Yes. What? By far. Halloween. Shot yeah. amazingly. Halloween Jesus. is shot amazingly. Yes. And I will watch Halloween every so often. And it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, It's not fun. Terribly How interesting. Is well, interesting. How is That's Nightmare on Elm Street. That's good. Nightmare. How is Nightmare good? Because Nightmare introduces Freddy. And while Freddy doesn't get a lot to do in this one, ultimately, as far as like some of his later pun-filled hijinks. But uh, in this one, the best we get is, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy, which yeah. of course became like a classic MST3K line. So it's awesome. The music is better in Nightmare than the other two. Which, although the Nightmare, cover look is both are good. Although Nightmare looks cheaper for the most part, yeah. Like it, 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 it like the just the the quality of the film stock and how it how most stuff is shot up looks cheaper. The effects are pretty good, but the actual cinematography, I'd say, it's probably the worst. Out. Well, I don't know if I'd say it's the worst out of the three. It just looks very like I, I would associate with like a terribly unremarkable eighties film. The the colors in Friday are really, really good. So that's a cinematic, I mean, it's something you see. I think the, the framing and the camera movement in Halloween is the best out of the three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in comparison, Nightmare as a film, uh, as a cinema, cinemographic, whatever the freak you want to say, is, is probably the worst of the three, other than the effects part, but, which but are pretty I, cool. But I found things. Nightmare yeah. to be, have a better story, ultimately. And that, or a story. You, yeah, at least you get some level of... Here's this weird thing that's going on, and we have a vague explanation for it. But with Halloween, you actually saw the origins. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you actually have a story that follows. Uh, of course, I don't know why he follows Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Well, but that's where these, I think, the stories of both Halloween and Friday fail compared to Halloween or uh, Nightmare because they leave some gaps. They have to retcon themselves, yeah. like in the second film. Yeah, yeah. Because Jamie Lee Curtis is supposed at some point the, uh, young, his younger sister. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Oh, it's so stupid. I've never seen any of these movies before this. I've seen parts and bits, but never like watched them to to care. Okay. 
Well, there you go. Now you can. I'd see. <laughs> I'd yeah. seen all three, but it had been a long time for Halloween and uh, Nightmare. I think I remembered Nightmare on Elm Street the least, and I know I'd seen it because I remembered that Johnny Depp was in it and that he dies getting sucked into a bed. <laughs> I have a question for both of you. I can see why he became a good actor, though. Or became popular. He's a good actor. Mm-hmm. I have a question. How His did face you, is weird in this. How did you two sleep last night? Did you sleep well? Actually, I was fine, which is weird for me because I'm highly susceptible to horror movies. Oh. I absolutely... We're going we're gonna to talk about I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I just meant... No, no. I slept fine. Did you dream? Did you have a good dream? I, like, I, I talks like that. I almost never dream. I mean, because that was a nightmare. They did that. Like, hey, I had a dream. And they started talking. And hey, how did you sleep? And all of a sudden, they started talking about their dreams. Right at the very beginning. Yeah. And leaving no room for question. Yeah. J.J. Abrams. Yeah. <laughs> did he do this? <laughs> he did not. Because right? they do. They just jump right into the story. Yeah. There's lots of this. And, and Friday the 13th tries to do that. But there's not... It's just it's it, it fails. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, I don't, maybe it doesn't complete enough of the exposition from 30, 15 years ago, or even setting up the stage of now. I feel from a story standpoint and from a probably a rewatchability standpoint, Nightmare is probably best out of the three. Yeah, I, I uh, with sure Halloween being second because again, I've seen it. I've seen it at least twice prior to this, and it's fine. I mean, it's not a great movie. Uh, but it does definitely do its job of putting you in a Halloween mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a really good pe- like piece for just feeling the malaise of fall, actually. Which, this isn't fall, though. Like, in the movie, in Halloween. It's in California. It's, well, not, it's, it's, it's not in California. But it's, it's supposed to be in Illinois. But all the trees are green. Right. Everything is... But then you have a few dead leaves on the ground. Like, where do these dead leaves come from? But it's... It, <laughs> so, that's my biggest problem with Halloween is nobody puts a lit pumpkin on their nightstand in their bedroom. Yeah. Nobody right, does that. Yeah. And then the Halloweeniness of the night was was dumb. Like, there should have been kids kind of everywhere. Right. And the blessing of people, but you only saw a smattered of leaves. Although it, it, yeah, feels, trick or it feels creepier and weirder to not have the kids around. It You get this weird isolated suburb thing that is really uncanny. Because suburbs aren't generally like that. Usually yeah. you do have a bunch of people around, even if it is fairly bucolic. Yeah. Um, Ooh, the the movie that it reminded me of on that score for a slightly different reason was the remake of Fright Night. And I don't remember if I've ever gotten around to the original of it, but uh, the uh, remake is done in Vegas. And there's a sh- there are multiple shots of the Vegas suburbs, which have to be the most desolate places on Earth. They really play with this idea of the suburb like that is a sea of lights in an absolute sea of dark around it. Hmm. And for Halloween, weirdly, you get that kind of, why isn't there anybody around here? Yeah. (laughs) This is just really weird kind of feeling that, again, makes it extra creepy. And it's done, I'm certain, for budgetary reasons. But Of course, yeah. Because it could have been- It's John Carpenter. (laughs) I mean, it's it's done for budgetary reasons. It could have been cool to see um, just quickly a whole bunch of Halloweeny people at dusk, and then vanish to then have yeah, the streets be. Yeah, yeah. It would have been as opposed to looking cheap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, but again, yeah. Those extras and feeding them would have. But like I said, sometimes cheap ends up being weirdly poetic. Like Donald Pleasants, for example, who probably didn't work for a lot in this movie and yet is great. Where have we seen him before? Uh, I don't remember what we watched that had him in it. Uh, He's in a whole bunch of things. Is he in Puma Man? Uh, Uh, He is in Puma Man. He's the villain in Puma Man. Yeah. Or I'm sorry. Puma Man. Puma Puma Man. Puma Man. Puma Man. Puma Man. Man. I have your will. You haven't said it three times. You haven't said it once. (laughs) I have your will, Tony. Tony Fox. (laughs) You are the Puma Man. Or the Puma Man. (laughs) Uh, Puma Man. That is, uh, we did that our superheroes. Yes, Puma Man is, uh, Puma Man's villain is Donald Plus. Oh. Another thing about Halloween that kind of irked me a little bit. I'm sorry. You're yelling. Jesus. Wow. Oh, I was upset. So. Focus your rage. Focus high school it. movies. Because this is a high school kind of movie a little bit. Lockers outside. Midwest. This is supposed to take a place in the Midwest. Contacting me. Shot in California, bro. Yeah. I know. <laughs> shot in California. 
there are lockers in the Midwest outside at a high school. Yeah. What what up with that? Like in the Midwest, most of the the school year is going to be in the winter. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Clay. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Is, this, <laughs> is there passed off as Illinois because Illinois is creepier than California, apparently? It's true. Or cheap. Well, Indiana is creepier than Illinois, though. Okay. Indiana is the creepiest. <laughs> was there any significance to Hayden Field, whatever it was? Not that I'm aware of. I think I, I've i never seen any explanation for why Illinois in this. Yeah. Other they, than Illinois is the heartland and creepier. Well, in Ohio, it was. Ohio is creepy, too. Yeah. Yo. Jeffrey Dahmer, man. Wait, what? His, his beginnings. Uh, he, oh, uh, he uh, grew I up. I thought in, it was Wisconsin. No, he grew up in Bath. No, I mean, like when he got caught. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. in. Uh, he was in uh, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. he, he and Alan were in the same class together. Really? I was not <laughs> in the same. <laughs> class. Palmer was much older. Than <laughs> uh, but he did go to the Ohio State University for one year. Yes. Supposedly, he lived at one of the tower doors. Why are you saying it like it's a creepy uh, ghost story? Ooh. The tower doors. It's the spooky season, man. What is that about? Because what? everybody's about the gonna come at the tower doors. <laughs> is that what happens? I'm certain it is. I mean, it's, they're high up. They're just enormous, bleak block towers. Oh, okay. People are obviously not having sex at any of them because I don't know how your libido would survive entering a large concrete structure. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> it's not what just happened. <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, jeez. So, speaking of smoking pot, um, <laughs> in Friday, the 13th, not Friday, Friday, but Friday the 13th, they're smoking pot, and you would think that they would be so paranoid, but there's a car following them the entire time. The paranoia doesn't kick in immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's 80s, man. It's usually more like an atmospheric thing that catches you later. Okay. So... There is one other thing in Friday the 13th. But they should have been barren. <laughs> we go, we go, I mean, there's lots to talk about. One thing, Friday the 13th. Um, the original murder of Jason happens in, what, 58? Mm, yes. 57, I thought. 58. 58. 58. Okay. And then when is... And anything happened in the 50s point. and 80s, kind of, you know, we've talked about that yeah. before. Yeah. Um, but they don't... I don't think they establish enough of that, really. No. And... Uh, I don't know how this movie reacts to, like, 1958. Because uh, 1958 is portrayed as a more wholesome time because everyone's sitting around and singing, mm -hmm. like, uh, like folk songs and mostly religious folk songs at that. But then they get to Tom Dooley, so. But how to Dooley. Hang down your head, Tom. Oh, yeah, yeah. that one. I thought you meant, like, that the Kingston Trio did. Like Tom Foolery. Well, because these, they're up to Tom. These Fuller. kids are up to these, these, these church kids who go off to bone. Uh, they are definitely up to Tom Foolery. Mm -hmm. But I think that's to undercut the wholesomeness because we get the 50s as super clean time with mm -hmm. innocent kids. And then and now these innocent kids are going off to bone or at least roll around and make out. <laughs> and what was because what was the first song that they were singing? It was very much a Christian. Oh yeah, song, oh, yeah. Right? I can't remember. I remember. It was at least two like church camp kind of songs, yeah. and then and like none of it, like none of it pegged them as like I don't know like fundamentalists or anything. I mean, did, did people sang uh, like pseudo religious songs at church camps all the time? Mm -hmm. So kumbaya and and kumbayas and that weird That's like classic. everybody gets it. Yeah. What was your favorite flick of the three? I liked Halloween. I could tell. It was nice. So, Nightmare, I Know How to Beat Freddy, Lucid Dreaming. And I even said that at the beginning, like, huh. Because, I, I mean, have you ever done that, Lucid Dreaming? Where you can, you know you're in a dream, so you can start doing stuff? Oh, yeah. It's fun. I was flying. One time, I woke up. And I woke myself up, and I gave myself a cliffhanger. And then I woke myself up. And I was like, dang it. Because <laughs> I didn't know how the dream was going to end. <laughs> you gave yourself a cliffhanger on purpose? I guess. I I'm going to think that Click is the only one at this table. We talk about lucid yeah. dreaming and not talk about anything dirty. <laughs> how are you not the stoned one? <laughs> Jesus, I don't understand. It's all water, baby. <laughs> Got a lot of VI in. 
Oh my oh, god. Water and Scooby Snacks. <laughs> so <it's>, oh man. <laughs> I started watching Scooby Doo too the other day. Oh, the one that's make it far. I did not make it far. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. I have tons of notes. Quotes? WTFs? What's your WTF? Yeah, I didn't get a lot of quotes, weirdly enough, for these. You'd think that for movies with, yeah. like, self-consciously bad scripts in some ways that they would... Uh, have one? I have one. Friday the 13th, oh. somebody said you're an American original to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in Nightmare on Elm Street, um, the, the first guy... I don't know anybody's name. Ooh. The first guy to... Um, so our, the the woman the the first woman that uh, comes in on Nightmare on Elm Street, she's having a dream, and then later on she gets killed, and the guy that she slept with is the guy that they think yeah killed her. So he said, "Guys can have nightmares too, you know." And I felt that that was nice because it's like it we put on a facade, but we have feelings too. Well, speaking of feelings, <laughs> the uh, hidden stigma for mental health in men needs to be addressed. Exactly. I have a quote and a question for you, Mr. Clark. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a quote from Friday the 13th. Again, I don't know who said it to who because that's just how I do things. I think Ned asked this. This is a very Ned question. Uh, if you were a flavor of ice cream, what would it be? I don't know. That's a tough question. Maybe a cherry cheesecake. I like that. Cherry <laughs> <laughs> cheesecake ice cream? And so do you like cherry cheesecake or do you like ice cream? Yes. And how is he not the stone war? I don't want to see anything. This doesn't seem to be a or a 90 year old. <laughs> yeah, her it's gracious. This is all me, baby. Yes, uh, parents, send your kids to art school. Uh, Alan, what flavor ice cream would you be? <laughs> uh, I can't even think of a funny answer to this fucking <laughs> never on. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a lot of quotes either. Wow, you said you had quotes. I think that I can't tell. I'm gonna have to work out some like, um, my notes. To, I'm using a rocket book. Hey, rocket book, if you're out there and want to sponsor us, I can't even understand what the fuck I wrote. <laughs> that's not your fault, though. That's, that's totally mine. That's but yes, rocket book, your product's great. Please, please take us out of the spot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the. So in Halloween, there's the house that the, um, not the main babysitter, but her friend is babysitting this little girl. Mm -hmm. Somehow she spills something on her clothes, so she has to take all of her clothes off right away, which is weird. Mm, yes. And then the laundry room is the shed in the backyard. What the hell? And then she gets caught in the window, thus single-handedly inventing poor dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes across the street to a friend's house with just the over shirt, the big shirt on. Like, okay, there's more clothes somewhere. <laughs> you could put them on. Well, dark kids and their nakedness. Here, here's a here's a quote I have from I think this is yeah from Nightmare. Uh, I think Alan, this might be tagline material. What's going on here? An orgy or something? <laughs> <laughs> from uh, I think that's from Johnny Depp. Baby face Johnny Depp is a vibe name. You said his face was weird. I said uh, he said it. I didn't say that. No, he's got face. a weird face. He has a crowd into his face. <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot of hair. Like a lot. Of and then like what? Fifty some years later, that was growing into his face again. <laughs> Have you seen so, the recent picture? Rather trollish. <laughs> the recent picture was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. With him shaven. Oh, how does? Because you do look weird. I, I mean, I realize it's weird when you change something like that. Yeah. It's, you have to use When's the last time you shaved your face? Oh. Uh, be face clink. A while ago. Oh, you know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> if Johnny Depp wanted to stay awake, he shouldn't have lied in, was lying in bed watching TV, listening to music. That's not how you stay awake. I thought he was fucking the television. <laughs> the way he was positioned. It, his... it was very unfortunately <laughs> positioned. <laughs> yes. Oh, here's a quote. Sorry, Bob. Just copulate with his TV. <laughs> <laughs> here's a quote. I think this is from the mother of um, mm. Jimmy Lee Curtis. What's her character again? Lori, right? Sure. I don't know. The Halloween. So in Halloween, Jimmy Lee Curtis, her her mother in the film, <clears throat> uh, she's a drinker. And I think, wait, this is her. 
Drinker is in uh, is, is nightmare. nightmare, 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 Nightmare. Oh, yeah, because uh, Nancy has a yeah. So Nancy's mom, mom. the uh, yes, the, uh, yeah, yes. And I think living closet is is this her line? They say you've bottomed out when you can't remember the yeah. night before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like that might be a good tag but, for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, she's the alcoholic mom. Yet she's the, the daughter is not living with the cop father. Right. So the cop father had had to do something horrible because he's she's not living with the cop father. She's living with the al- alcoholic mom. Well, he is John Saxon. I mean, he's played villains just as much as he's played anybody else. So you're so loud. I'm sorry. I get excited. You do. I get very excited. Ooh, well, but I mean, the cop works weird hours. Maybe there's more stability with the drunken mother <laughs> than, the, than the cop that just completely ignores his daughter. That was the worst part of Friday the 13th when she's screaming out the window. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. Cops like, whoa. Wait, Friday the 13th. Ah, fucking fuck. Nightmare. It's going to get all over the Yeah, place, Halloween. So. Oh, yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, like the whole the ending of Halloween was dumb. Halloween? Fuck. <laughs> so, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. So we watched three horror movies. And now they're all bleeding together. Yep. I, well, what was that? That's part of the melange <laughs> for this creativity. Who, who was it that S- said to take all three of these scripts and put it into AI and see if what came out? Another interesting thing about all three of these films is they left the ending open. From what? Yes. Yeah, they, they didn't leave it open, open. They meant, like, for Friday the 13th, it was, oh, it's done. And then all of a sudden, ba 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 ba. You know, that was, that's kind of dumb. And then I did like the Halloween one because it just, he disappeared. So that left it open. Right. And then for Nightmare, that was just odd too because. I feel like Tim Burton took over the last five minutes of it. Yeah. It was just like, and I think that's just specifically the freaking hood that. Yeah. The yeah. canopy of the car that comes up. That's yeah. His sweater. So that means that Freddy can shape shift. Oh yeah. It's what, awesome. Is Freddy maybe based on it a little bit? Um, and then it come uh, on. It was uh, in the seventies, so yeah, uh, probably sort of like the neighborhood menace that is like yeah. destined to be there. Yeah. Um, the other big influence on this was the weird tendency of young men who had just immigrated, who were of Hmong ancestry, of uh, dying mysteriously uh, while suffering from sleep paralysis. Oh, jeez. Is that the story that... That is the story. Movie? That is the story that inspires it. It comes up in the uh, IMDb notes. Gotcha. And I was thinking that as the movie had gone on because of because of the, the Hmong case of their weird form of sleep paralysis is actually uh, commonly talked about in folklore, uh, specifically in belief studies, because it's one of those weird places where we're trying to figure out whether people's beliefs can be strong enough to kill them. (laughs) So the Hmong uh, believed so much that a Mara experience, otherwise known as uh, being hag-ridden or other uh, terms that's been given in folklore, this experience for the Hmong can actually kill them. At least that's the theory. Uh, I don't know if it's been contradicted. I've looked around to see whether that study or that uh, series of ideas ever got debunked, and I haven't seen anything on it hmm. yet. What are dreams? Apparently they can kill you. What? Am I allowed to talk now? No. I, I, I stopped myself. Oh. I thought you were saying I can't talk anymore. No, you can talk. I got sad. You should talk more. <laughs> what are dreams? That is a good question. Because is there just the... I just know that these dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? <laughs> I've traveled the world in the seven seas. Everybody's it, looking for something. Everybody. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. No, but like, so... In, so recently in the uh, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, they had it to where dreams were the other... Um, parallel universes that we have. We have multiple universes, mm-hmm. and you're just seeing in the life of another person. That's you, like another version of you, which is kind of cool. And then you have what an unsatisfying description of what dreams are. Oh, yeah. they're often frequently much crazier than that. Well, infinite number of possibilities. I could fly in another universe. You don't know. You don't know me. 
<laughs> but then in like the Sandman uh, show, it was like another realm that you went to and you had a king that was in that realm and he would dictate, oh, you're going to have a nightmare, you're going to have a dream, things like that. And then they, there's like this infinite number of possibilities there. Because... And a cast of dream figures that are very yeah. important. But then scientifically, the boring science stuff is it's just a manifestation of our subconscious doing something to us, working something out or trying to tell us something or whatnot. And it's, that's the boring side. I like the other things where I can go to a, a different universe and go fly yeah. and go fly. That's awesome. Follow your dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that probably has a different meaning that people are like, oh, now he thinks this or now he's this, whatever. <clears throat> it's not like I have, I'm on a train going through a tunnel or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Frequently re-entering the tunnel. Anyway. Why is there so much blood? Um, <laughs> <laughs> This movie is creepy. Uh, Name Elm Street is creepy. I think so. The other two are just trying to do jump scares. Eh, I don't know. I think uh, Halloween has a little bit of actual creepiness. Yeah, because there's a dude following this lady the whole time. But he's walking in daylight, dude. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> like, it's not menacing at all. And then the first time you really see him, when he's supposed uh, we're talking about Halloween and Michael Myers, when he's yeah. supposed to be like probably his most threatening, they've got the fucking sheet and sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Jesus, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. No, it's the glasses of the guy that just had sex. But still, he looks he looks yeah. like a, a clown. Yeah. Yes. Not menacing he, anything. But he's just standing there. But he was dressed as a clown when he was a kid. Yes. So now this movie's better. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how this works. <laughs> All tied together. Is it just, is there some meaning, but I don't know if there is, other than, there's got to be some. Do you think that Nightmare on Elm Street did for dreams what Jaws did for beaches? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can say that very definitely because uh, uh, Jaws has made a permanent weird traumatic impression on me, whereas... Um, even the idea of Jaws actually imposed that. I didn't see Jaws until well into adulthood, as I recall. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> Nightmare is kind of goofy. Yeah. And that's the point. It's supposed to be weird, and it gets goofier later. But the... It's hard, though, because Fred is a fucking pedophile. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's... You're rooting for a pedophile at some point in this movie? Well, he's not a pedophile. He's a child murderer because they didn't want to save him. a pedo. They did? Okay. I'm pretty, I'm like, certainly it's sure. certainly okay. in blood. Yeah, because I didn't think they could say it at the time. But. So they better probably say pedo. <laughs> I don't know how it was pronounced back in the... I wasn't alive then. Leave me alone. Yeah, you were. Oh, he wasn't saying those words, though. <laughs> One but hope not. <laughs> <laughs> or hearing those words, even. But... Yeah, because like for Jaws, I I watched it. I, I was like maybe early teens, and then we went to the to like Palmy Bay, so the beach, mm. the lake. Yeah, yeah. Like no sharks. Bull sharks, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's still like I'm like fresh water. Oh, yeah, I don't want to go in. Swim up, swim up lakes. Yeah, or rivers. <clears throat> oh, so Nightmare on Elm Street does not show what a person goes through when they stay up multiple multiple days with caffeine. Right. Because they didn't have the jitters. Yeah. They didn't have the, the not thinking clearly. Nothing. Well, they had they had some of that. But it was only it was only occasionally. Though. Yeah. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't the same level of oh my god, yeah. I can't even think that Yeah. Especially somebody who's actually that hot pot of coffee. <laughs> oh I, I, I noted at that point Nancy's mom has no sense of smell. <laughs> yeah. She's a smoker. Oh <laughs> no, there you go. Well, he been a drinker Have on Halloween. Me. The the cop didn't even smell the weed on the, the on his daughter and her friend in the car when they were pretty much hot boxing. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Not a good cop. The cop and how none of these cops are good cops. No, 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 no. no. No, if you have a good cop, you don't have a slasher movie. All this <laughs> yeah, that's true. To him. This doesn't seem right. Let me arrest you. Uh, either you don't get the trauma at the beginning, or you don't get the trauma at the end. Well, one way or the other. And that's from um, I think it's Nightmare when Nancy's screaming. You talked about this earlier. The uh, the cop who you know through all the ordeal says maybe I should go tell the income. <laughs> what the fuck is the word I get that there? <laughs> maybe I should go tell the lieutenant. It looks like incumbent, but it's lieutenant. 
I'm the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the thing you want to tell people. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, my, I wrote worst cop ever, and I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, worst cop ever, definitely. I did like it in Home Alone. Uh, not Home Wow. In Nightmare, where she did Home Alone her house, pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. With the, yes. the book of Mad Trap. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I yeah, I was good. That. With a sledgehammer right away. Yeah. And then the light bulb that has the, the gun powder in it. Yeah. 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 But she didn't use any micro machines or chars and feathers at fucking glass. <laughs> or she didn't even make the knob red hot. With a flame. She didn't do any of that. It's not the fun stuff. It's the, I want to murder you stuff. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's so fun. I mean, it's handy crap. Yeah. I think oh. this rocket notebook will work once we're not doing free movies. Mm -hmm. What, did all your notes get jumbled up? It's, it's I don't know. It's either that or the alcohol. <laughs> it's a combination of both. Speaking of the uh, home alone traps, uh, I wrote down, why, she, she didn't tell her alcohol, alcohol mom any of this. So her alcoholic mom could, I mean, she was asleep in her bed, but she could, you know, get up in the middle of the night, do Except something. losses. Come on. <laughs> Turn on the light, all of a sudden the, the thing explodes. No more alcoholic mom. <laughs> That's sad. Or maybe just not the top of her head. <laughs> her side, that could be pretty awful. <clears throat> oh, does time move in the same way as the real world and the dream world? Because she was saying exactly twenty minutes, and then she put a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She kept looking at like, the that, 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 like a, that assumes that your plot chief it goes with you into the dream. So yeah, yeah. or it, well, they established that because she pulls his hat out and then right, that's right. why it allows her to pull him out. So there's some, well, yes, there's, I guess there's some rules. Logic, yeah, but in dreams, you, I, I thought I could read in dream, but in dreams they say you can't read. Like there are words out there, but you can't like make out what they are. You. Your brain kind of tells you what they're supposed to be, I guess. Huh. So if she's looking at a clock, she's probably looking at a clock. But it's like, <laughs> there's a there's a letter A. There's a omega symbol. You know, there's random things going on. This is crazy. Uh, better off dead connection in mm -hmm. Mayor on Elm Street. The first victim, uh, Tina Amanda White. Tina as Amanda Weiss. She's in Better Off Dead. She's walking around on concrete outside with bare feet. That's how you get tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, if I didn't already have something, that'd be out of use for uh, what I learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ha read what I learned. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's say, should we go there? <laughs> well, I have a question for Alan. Yes. Is Fantastic Planet a horror movie with uh, Liam ne or Leslie Nielsen? Mm -hmm. I don't think it is. It's science fiction yeah. as it's usually regarded, but it is it's one that. They do encounter like a fear monster, as I recall. So it's the precursor to Star Trek, though, too. But it can also be like seen in that way as sort of a precursor to Alien or something. Oh yeah, like okay. I mean, okay. there is like a scary alien menace, I guess. So yes, I don't know. <laughs> I have no reference to what you're talking about. It was the Leslie Nielsen movie when he used to be a serious actor in the fifties. He was part of a crew. It's really delightful to watch. It's good. I liked it. It was what is it for the listener? Oh, I, I, I think mean, Fantastic Planet, right? No, that's something else. There's so many of them. That's keep talking. I'll that's the French movie I want you to watch, but you're not going to watch it because it's French. We oui, we. Oui. That's how you know, right? We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Which scared our conversation of friends? Crazy. See. Si. Oh, try and we'll. I'll speak German. <laughs> oh my goodness what is the heck oh I had a question for you Vanderpool Ooh, so questions. how does lighting affect film versus digital I'm sorry what the, so lighting right how does it affect with film versus digital because like for example for Next Generation Star Trek because I'm a Trekkie I remember um, no people thought that the the uniforms were brighter than they were because they had so many bright lights on them because mm. they had to for film or for digital, from my understand, you don't have to have as much of a bright light on the subject when you're when you're filming them. Well, I guess you could just do it in post super easy. But... Well, then you just up the gain or whatever. I don't know. I don't know words. I think, and this is me, total bullshit. You're the movie guy. <laughs> total bullshit. I'm like the mimest. Um, it the the dynamic range 
of the light to dark is better on film. I think, I think, I think. Okay. So you get more richness and color before it starts getting washed out and, and weird, right? So you can do more with less light. Well, I feel that makes sense. Yeah, because I can light, if I digital, if I were to light you, the entire background in this lighting, if I pulled you away, whatever. This is great for an audio podcast, by the way. Would, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're the one to add. Yeah. <laughs> the background would end up getting, would not be rich, dark. It would be grainy, gross, not, and not grainy, noisy. Okay. So it would look digital because it, digital didn't handle low, does not typically handle low light as good as film oh. because of the dynamic different okay. range. That's one thing. That makes and before we go on, I don't know if we need to go on about that, but there's, you could do a lot with digital, but that specific look that you get from a film is also hard to replicate digitally, especially in the eighties. Now with the tools we have, you can fucking do all the same thing that you want. Mm -hmm. But back then you wouldn't have been able to. So shooting on anything digital back then would have looked. But all right, none of these are digital. No. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about it for the, because the, the again, Nightmare was the first movie I watched and I think it was Nightmare that I did that. Anyways, um, or Halloween, whatever. But I was, I noticed there was the bright spotlight off camera that would illuminate the, the, the trees and then illuminate the side of the character because yeah. they wanted to show it's nighttime, but they didn't want to really want to have just darkness. Yeah. So that got me thinking about the lighting and how it affects film versus digital. Fun. All right, it's fun. It is. I can't wait to make a horror movie. What are you in your ears on? I'll, I'll give you the script. It's called The Director. Well, or that or Lights, Camera, Die. <laughs> I like Lights, Camera, Die. I think it's a better name, too. Because I want it to be very, very campy. Yeah, but wait till you read it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. Oh. So, and Halloween, Mike Myers stabs people. Oh, the worst stabbing scene ever. Or no, worst Wait, stabbing one? outcome, use of the knife, bullshittery effects ever. Which one are you talking about? Whatever movie it was where he, Michael Myers, I think it's Michael Myers, yeah, it had to have been, comes in and stabs, what's his name, up against the wall, mm -hmm. does Darth Vader to him. Yeah. Stabs against the wall, and then the knife, only this, the knife isn't actually going into the wall yes. or anything and holding him there. Yeah, that was crazy. That was dumb. That was, that was dumb. But, but he gets stabbed by Jamie Lee Curtis's character. And that got me thinking about there's a family guy sketch where a guy's in prison and he wanted to stab somebody because that's what he's known for. And the guy just goes, I, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm getting out of the prison. And so he goes, huh, okay. And then he just kind of stabs himself a little bit. He goes, ow, that hurt. This is what I've been doing to people this whole time. I belong here. And I'm like, oh, he's learning the lesson. Don't stab people because that hurts. <laughs> Well, well, Michael Myers. <laughs> no. So we should probably work uh, towards wrapping it up. I have no idea when my wife and kids will be home. Oh. How much more do we have to cover? Not much. That's fine. I mean, there's still much to cover with these movies. That's kind of the problem. Like, there's so much you could actually talk about. And we don't even, we haven't even defined who people really are. I it's was, a I was impressed with Jamie Lee Curtis's, um, she was t in total control of the situation. She was like the best babysitter ever. Mm, mm, really? Yeah. She makes sure the kids are safe. She's Ooh. fighting off a killer. They have 10 minutes. Crazy. Anyways. Boogeyman, Alan. Where does that come from? Because it's in question, what actually. Uh, I don't remember where it gets its origins. It, it goes back further than like our use of the word boogie on its own. I just don't know exactly where it did originate Interesting. i could look it up while you guys are talking yes i must tell my students if you don't know i'll look it up because because we can uh do what we learned then and he's on down the road yeah. okay what did you learn well what i learned i think is going to be beneficial because i can apply it that's how you know you've learned something right? and you can apply it to a sure. situ <laughs> situation yeah i'm going to be editing this podcast <laughs> later this week yeah yeah and i'm not sure that the Story, the audio, I'm not sure everything's going to be all that great, right? Okay. Microphone, middle of the table. I think that if I, if I put string instrument underneath this whole thing, 
it will make it all better. So I learned that that's how you take something that's kind of okay and and make it real good. Please don't do that. Though. We are doing. Don't don't play string. It's gonna listen for the re re rough draft cut that you have to listen to the whole time. It's on repeat. Right and, now, well, thank you. And then right when I'm I'm talking, it's. I'll see what we can do. <laughs> Kevin, the phone. Let's go. Apparently, the word bogey originated in the mid 19th century, according to Wikipedia. And apparently, they suspect it might have a Middle English origin. It's a ridiculously unsatisfying article. It tells me nothing. <laughs> so cite that on your English papers, kids. Wikipedia. What did you learn, Alan? I learned Wikipedia is very unsatisfying <laughs> entry on the bookie van. Oh, okay. Give me more time to think. Okay. So I have one lesson per movie. Oh, nice. You are an overachiever. He is. So in Nightmare and Elm Street, lucid dreaming is always the way to go. Because that's how you win. And turning your back and <clears throat> denying them your attention. Yeah. Which is uh, almost like social media, I believe, many, <laughs> many people have pointed out. <laughs> um, in Halloween, I learned to be resourceful and always make sure they're dead. Yeah. Good one. Very good. Double tap with the frying <laughs> pan. Just <laughs> give it. Well, no, that was, that was Halloween. Oh, uh, no. No, but the frying pad was, uh, that was the, the weapon that was used to put down uh, Mrs. V. Yeah, but that was, um, that Friday. was Friday, yeah. And Friday the 13th, my lesson was camping is dangerous because everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> <My boy. laughs> well, since it is, this was our inaugural Halloween special and we don't know if we'll ever do this again, uh, let's not pick something for next time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and maybe just say bye, folks. And last the Halloween. If there's anything anybody missed? Oh, uh, I learned that a Amish nightgown will not prevent you from being killed for apparently being a slut anyway. Uh, that's Friday the 13th. Wait, what? One of the gals who gets out of this wearing an incredibly <laughs> modest nightgown. And after I was vaguely resentful of it. <laughs> But running in the rain. Right. After and, having and it, already it, had a raincoat on in the scene yeah, yeah. before that they could have worn outside. But the white thing didn't become <laughs> flimsy or anything. It was just like burlap. <laughs> I was sad. Bye, folks. Bye, folks. Bye, folks.